uh, we are partnering with this, uh, the city of Las Cruces. Uh, we are going to be offering some webinars. And, you know, normally they would be in person, of course, but we're doing webinars due to the circumstances. And our first one um, is, is uh, we're doing it both in English and in Spanish, but our first one is scheduled for August 20th. So please mark your calendars. We're going to ask Debbie if she could share some of this information on the um, Chamber's uh, calendar of events. But the first uh, webinar will be five tips for small businesses to survive COVID-19. We have that curriculum. We have a, a guest speaker that will be speaking on that. Um, and on August 19th, I should have done those the, uh, the other way around, but August 19th will be the Spanish version. It'll be Cinco consejos para empresas chicos sobrevivan el COVID-19. So we're doing these both in English and Spanish. We've got a calendar of events for the next six months with different topics to help small businesses with that are, you know, impacted by COVID-19. On August 26th, we're planning a lunch and learn. This is something else that we will be doing. It is uh, scheduled for 11.30 to 12.30 during your lunch hour. We want you to have lunch in front of your computer, which I know a lot of us are doing. But um, what I'm planning on doing on August 26th, and I'm hoping that we have more information on the PPP forgiveness, that we will have some guest speakers from Lift Fund that are working diligently and learning more about the forgiveness program to be available to speak on that. And it'll be open to you all to be able to ask and interact with our speakers. So that will be available. So that is kind of the format that we're doing every single month. It'll, it'll be the, I believe it's the third uh, Thursday of each month where we will have these webinars. Um, I'd like to know though, some feedback from you all. We were thinking of scheduling them after hours because I know during the day, most of you are working, but what is the best time for these webinars? If you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, uh, t talking to me and opening it up and um, sharing or what kind of talk topics would you all like to see? What would help you all? Because that's what we're here for, to support you all and to help you. So I'd like to hear from some of you if you don't mind. During the day works for me. This is during the day. Care. Martha, during the day works for you. Okay. Anybody else want any topics, any particular topics you all are interested in? I mean, we did come up with some of the topics, you know, cash flow budgeting in times of COVID-19. That's for September. In October, we're looking at startup info sessions because there's still some small businesses or entrepreneurs out there that are interested in starting their own business. Um, I know Jim, and please chime in. Is he still on? Yes, he is. How are you all doing with um, new loans or anything like that to, to help new businesses? Are you all still doing those? Well, Lupe, you know, we'll, we'll certainly visit with all folks that want to talk about their business and maybe financial loans that they might need for them. So we're happy, like all banks, to look at it. Certainly the COVID-19 has made a large impact on many of the businesses. I would encourage those like you have that haven't gone and received a PPP loan, make sure you do go. It's, it's still available. The, uh, the terms are better than the first round. It's a 60 month loan. It's still forgivable. The deferment is for a long time and probably we'll get into it. The bill that is currently, that has been introduced and hopefully will get passed for, for, for the forgiveness of loans $150,000 and below, it'll be a very easy process. So we're hopefully, hoping that that comes through. And then the additional bill that includes PPP loans to businesses that have already received one when they meet certain criteria. And that's many of your like daycares, probably bars, lounges, establishments like that, that have not been able to reopen or reopened at much reduced capacity and uh, certainly need uh, the ability to get another PPP loan. So hopefully that comes through too. Yep, no, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Um, and you know, Debbie and I were just talking a little earlier and she's gathering more information also, but on the Small Business Recovery Loan Fund um, that the state of New Mexico is gonna be offering and that's up to $75,000, um, no collateral. 
uh, the terms are great. The terms are really, really great. Uh, something to look forward to. Debbie, I think you said you were looking into that, but we are applying to be one of the uh, lenders. Jim, are you all going to be doing that as well? You know, since I'm down in El Paso, uh, I'm sure the folks in, in Las Cruces, if they haven't learned about that, will learn about it. And we'll just have to see. You know, I, I will throw in something related to Live Fund and I it, it, uh, hope you don't mind, Lupe, but I have made referrals to Lift Fund, and Lift Fund has helped businesses at the stage where maybe the bank wasn't ready to do it. So it's a great way for us as bankers to have a resource for businesses to go to, and they can get their financing through Lift Fund. So I wanted to make sure I included that in there. So thanks for your help on those. Absolutely. And, I, and yes, ma'am, go I ahead. I was just going to jump in here and say, please. Regarding the state loan, I believe there, the lending would be direct from the New Mexico Finance Authority. Correct. The financial institutions would do the application only. Uh, but then the funding would come totally from the New Mexico Finance Authority, but you have to go through a lender, approve, an Correct. approved lender to fill out the application. And, that, and your, your uh, gross income from April, 19 and May 19 has to be 30% less than, I mean, your May 20, anyway, you're going to compare April 19 to April 20, and then separately April, May 19 to May 20. And you have to see 30% um, decrease in each month. It's not collective, it's each month separately. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. So it is great terms. Um, I mean, it's right. I think when I saw the documents the other day, it was 1.625%. That is correct. It, it was, um, I think, uh, whatever the prime rate is. and It's uh, half. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I, I, have a, I have their presentation here, but it is uh, half of the Wall Street Journal prime, which is currently at 1.625. The terms of the loan are three years. Um, there's no collateral. Repayment is interest only paid annually and principal due at maturity and loan may be extended for an additional three years with monthly principal and interest payments. So the first three years, it's only interest payments. And then after that, it is uh, the, at maturity, the principal is due or you can extend it for another three years. So yeah, it is great term. So they're, they're, we're do, they're doing a lot to help small businesses and it's just a matter of taking advantage of those programs. As so Jim was, like, yes. have you, I'm sorry to interrupt. Have you heard uh, when the list of lenders is going to be approved? Uh, you know, they're in the process of accepting That's them. I'm I thinking thought. within the next week or so, they should have the list. I think once you go in and apply and you're applying, it'll pop up a list of all the lenders. If you're not working with one of them, in, uh, in it'll particular, connect you. it'll connect you to one of the, those lenders, depending on your, you know, where you're located and all. So is the application available now? Yes, it is. Actually, it is. It is under the New Mexico Finance Authority. Well, you know, I'm trying to look for the website on this, um, but it is available now. Okay, so we'll get that information out to our membership yes, uh, yes. today. Um, it is the New, Me uh, New Mexico and mfinance.com. Okay. Okay, right. so yes, ready to, and we're, like I said, we are applying to be one of those lenders. So if you all are interested, please don't hesitate to, to let me know. Um, I just want to share also, just like Jim said, you know, one of the things that we really pride ourselves is with all the technical assistance that we do. We do, like I said, you know, we help our small business. We want to see them succeed. We are a nonprofit. My job is to fundraise, is to look for the funding to be able to support our small businesses. So that's, that's really important. And so we, we want to be able to get our money back and turn around and be able to lend it back out again. So for example, you know, if, if you're having difficulties, uh, if there's any problems or anything, we will uh, work with you as best as we can. If we have to extend the, the term of the loan, we will. We will do whatever we can in our power to help our small businesses because we want to we want to see them succeed. We have online uh, platforms where you can go in, take advantage of that. And let me let me share our screen. Let me share our our website real quick so that you can see exactly what we we have to offer our our small businesses. 
um, any of you, even if you don't have a loan with us, you're more than welcome to um, uh, go to our website and use any of our resources that we have available for you all. So let me share here. So, Lupe, while you're doing that, the yes, webinars you mentioned with the City of Las Cruces, is that part of their technical assistance uh, program that was approved by the City Council? That is correct. That okay. is correct, Debbie. That is correct. So this is our website, uh, livefund.com. If you go under learn, there's templates and there's tools available for you all that you all can use. Um, we have Lift Learn, which is a financial and management online courses. And you can take this, you know, anytime you want. It's, it's there available for you all. Uh, we love to hear from our small businesses, you know, what they have to offer, or what they, uh, you know, and if you notice, we have a client directory up, up here. We like to promote our small businesses with what they have to offer. Um, so all this is available for you all. Um, and of course, our events and seminars are available. You all can tap in. All of them are virtual right now. We do have some women business centers. So those are available. And I believe you can register for those even though you're not there and be able to tap into those um, uh, webinars as well. But ours will be listed up there for the ones coming for Las Cruces. I really especially uh, especially want to invite you to those lunch and learns. Like I said, we are planning on doing them both in English and in Spanish to answer those questions because I want it to be very interactive to help you all, you know, answer some questions. Sometimes, you know, those questions are leering and they're there and you just don't know who to ask. We will be available. And, and I know that if we don't have the answers, we will find out for you. Um, Jim, I also want to, I know you all do a lot of SBA lending. Um, what do you have to share about the SBA? Because I know we, we have them available as well. Um, you know, they're limited. They make the, the SBA is making it very limited as to who we can lend out to some, uh, I believe no restaurants are part of that. No gyms. Um, do you want to share a little bit of information on that? Well, you know, we do participate with the SBA and we're an express lender through the SBA. So we do have that designation. We can pursue the full 7A packages and we do provide SBA 504 loans. And just to throw out the SBA 504 loans are for equipment and real estate financing. Mm -hmm. And the debenture rates, which are 40% of the project are around two and a half percent fixed for 20 years. So it's a tremendous uh, program for businesses that may be looking to go to their own space if they've been leasing and they want to purchase a building. It, it, it's a great way right now with the SBA and it's going to be difficult for a 504 loan, but a 7A loan can still qualify if you can close and fully disperse the 7A loan by September 27th, the SBA will make six months of payments. And they're currently doing that for existing SBA loans and for the debenture piece of the 504 loans. So it's part of the, uh, the stimulus that's going on to help businesses. They've been making six months of the P&I payments. So, so there's some great things going on with the SBA. They do have some restrictions, like you said, and certainly as lenders and business owners, we can go to sba.gov and be able to research the different programs, the EIDL loans, mm -hmm. information about the PPP loans, all that information. It's a good website to go to and just look at because they have information for both the borrowers and the lenders, the different programs. They do have dedicated 1-800 numbers that you can call and get information. So just would encourage anybody that hasn't been there and is interested in maybe an SBA product to look at that. That's right. And we've partnered with, for example, Citizens Bank of Las Cruces on, a, you know, loans where if, you know, they can't make the full amount, we come in af behind them. And so that's available too. So just to keep that in mind. Are there any questions? Let me see. Okay, so just webinars during the day or after hours, specifically interested in the PPP. So thank you, Kathy, for that, uh, for the forgiveness side of that. Any other questions from anybody? I want to I want to share one more I'm going to share my screen one more time I'm going to show a short video um, just about the fun so that you all are a little more familiar with us um, 
again, we're here. I'm excited to, like I said, to announce that we have uh, extended an offer to a gentleman to be our boots on the ground in Las Cruces. Uh, let me share here. Sure, computer sound. Okay, here we go. My name is Andrea Le. My name is Ted Terrazas. My name is Kathleen Baines. Ronel Millian. Clara Perez Pelaez. Nancy Burrington. My name is Dwayne Price. You may have heard of my business, Wayne's Wings. I'm proud to be part of the Lee Fung family. My husband and I always had a dream of starting our own business. I started my business in 2010 for my family and to leave a legacy behind. I didn't realize how important money was. Since I am a veteran, I thought it'd be a lot easier for us to be able to start a business. There was a point in the business where I, I didn't know what to do. Until we met with Lift Fund. Until we met with Lift Fund. With seven banks turning me down, the timing was essential that I get funding sooner than later. And the business wouldn't be possible itself if it wasn't for Lift Fund. Lift Fund was a lifeline. I was able to now do the business instead of being the business. Recently, we just got our self-opening and the people is loving our traditional coffee. Lift Fund provides a hand up. It opens the Doors. Lifts clients financially and emotionally. It backs those left behind to level the financial playing field. And provide opportunities. Opportunities to those who deserve it. There's no judgment at Lift Fund. It's about progress. And working with each other to remove barriers. Join the movement. Join the movement. Join the movement to build a more just and equitable community for me. For us. For us. Because when we support each other, we create a better future for all of us. Felicidades a Lift Fund por su 25 aniversario. Y gracias por apoyar empresarias como yo. There you go. Just wanted to share that, just so that you all are aware that we're here to support you all as well. So, any any questions? I don't... So, Lupe, listen, yes. what are you seeing? I mean, I'm getting a lot of calls from different, um, my counterparts across the nation about what businesses are facing. Uh, what do you think the... Besides financial, what do you think the biggest challenge is that you're hearing from small business right now? You know, honestly, honestly, Debbie, it's emotional. It's the uh, uncertainty. Um, and, and we actually have a, a webinar that we can on that because that's exactly a lot of stress, a lot of emotions are, because again, they don't know what is gonna happen, where the next payment's gonna come from. They're, you know, being at 25, 50% capacity is sometimes just not paying the bills. All the support that we've been able to provide through SBA and, um, you know, through funders has been very helpful, but it's running out. It's running out and this is still going on. And it's like, what's next? I keep hearing that, Debbie, you know, what's next? What, where, where can we get our next dollar? Where can we get our next loan or right. grant? And I think right now what I'm also hearing is the hesitation to get to get another loan because Correct. then you have to pay it back. And I just want to encourage all of you on the call. And then as we continue is um, get the loan because most financial lending institutions are, are while well, they know that they, they're very well aware of the risks they're taking now. But we, we want to keep you in business. And so uh, don't leave any stone unturned. I know we have some 501c3s on here. Um, for you, I highly recommend you continue to look at the grant portion under some of the um, foundations throughout the United States. I, I know one small business I heard, uh, I believe uh, it was on a national call in Illinois that ended up getting like six different foundation grants from across the nation. Uh, so that, that's an open area for nonprofits, the, particularly the 50C3 world, because 50C3s are so important to where we go move forward. And we've got to keep them viable. And so I, I think, you know, I, I hear the emotional part. Uh, I also hear the hesitation, you know, on it being safe. And I will tell you, we've, uh, I'm on the Las Cruces Economic Recovery Board, and we're, we've actually, um, through the approval of the city council, launching a Las Cruces Safe Promise, where we want everyone to go into uh, the website. It's not up and running yet, but it will be probably next week to be to take the safety you know wear your mask wash your hands uh, have sanitizer with you uh six feet social distancing all of the things that we know but the other part of that is where we will be promoting the new mexico safe certified 
So businesses, uh, we as a chamber, my, me and my staff have gone through the videos. We are considered safe certified. And it's just a little, little document, but it's great videos, but it says we care about our, our employees, we care about our, our safety, and we care about our customers. And, you know, we all often hear about customers being fearful of going in. Well, businesses are fearful of you coming in. So it's a two-way street. Right. And we all have to be considered safe together. So those are some of the initiatives that safe peace, feeling safe helps kind of soften that anxiety, the emotion that everyone's feeling right now. And then we're all apprehensive about the schools, you know, what the school's going to do and how are we going to keep our employees employed? So those are some of the broad based issues I'm hearing from both the business side and the employer and the workforce side. That, that is correct, Debbie. And you know, it, it, it's just, I wish we can do more. And that's where we come in also where, you know, I'm, I'm constantly looking for funding. Uh, grants are great, like you said, you know, trying to find um, ways to help these small businesses. You know, I'm, I'm working with currently with, uh, it's called HIP Power Up, trying to work something out with them. They bring philanthropists from all over the world together to help small businesses. You know, they, they may request you know, we want to help minorities. We want to help veterans. We may want to help women-owned businesses, which, by the way, we do have a veteran. If any of you are small business owners that are veterans, we do have, through the uh, USAA, uh, some funding available for that. So, again, that's my job. What I'm doing is looking for that funding to turn around and help you. And, you know, working with them to try to make those terms you know, affordable for small business owners. And so that that's exactly what I'm doing, Debbie. Good. Well, any other questions? Well, thank you, Lupe, and uh, for, for being on our call today. And Jim and you guys, the Citizens Bank, and yes. all of you all, um, I just, we're here to help you. We are here for you. So uh, watch your... Um, emails and we will be having um, I'm thinking some more things the chamber is actually looking at uh, we are going to be doing some other uh, business specific um, hopefully to help you um, navigate so with that I would say uh, be safe stay healthy and lead on thank you so much for joining us today thank you Debbie for hosting us